Continuing. Let's go. Right, okay, so here's the workshop. That's our first construction. Now all we need is a UFO, please, or any sort of council mission. And there's the UFO, scramble our interceptors. Yes, please. Good. Please send the Sky Ranger. Now the only thing that I do not like is that we are now having two immobile snipers and an immobile like heavy unit. So it might be a little bit surprising but I'm considering skipping her out for another rookie with the high aim. I think we had another 70. Uh, here he is, Ian Anderson. I guess it's debatable. One could now say it would make more sense to go with two snipers, but since they don't have squad sight so far, it it's a pain in the ass because I'm running around with guys that need to use pistols in order to kill stuff. Get ready to deploy. Our AO is within the continental United States. Okay, so that's going to be two patrols of two uh, sectoids and one outsider. We definitely want to move the heavy last, always. Strike one is authorized to assault the alien craft. And if possible by any means, I would also try to be a little bit aggressive on um, the melt here. Uh, because I feel like uh, four sectoids. Um, so two sectoids, uh, two packs of two sectoids. It is relatively easy to um, to compensate for triggering them. You can still go into into cover. Um, so Overwatch is not as much needed. But then uh, that was a mistake. Misclick on my side. But then again, I've uh, got ambushed very often. and had an unlucky shot, although I was standing in full cover. So maybe you shouldn't take the advice of being over-aggressive here. Maybe having the right level of aggress uh, aggression is, is correct. So like moving to the maximum, even if you're not in cover, as long as you don't trigger, that's fine. But like don't dash into the open. I suppose that's probably a worthwhile tip. Um, that's one of the maps that I basically enjoy because you do have a lot of full cover here in this woods, which is, in my opinion, great because most of the other um, U UFO maps do not fe feature as, as such. Because it is larger than the other UFO maps, uh, this map here um, is also, of course, empty currently because uh, the number of uh, enemies doesn't scale with the map. It is predetermined by, by the mission. That's the reason why we haven't found someone so far. This was the notice of the of the outsider. So this was just the outsider that we en encountered. And that's our first melt. The second melt is either inside of the UFO here or um, or, or up here. It is up here. So we are definitely trying to go for the second melt first. Um, always keep in mind if you just barely can s uh, see the edge of the UFO, you are fine. You can just continue moving because you will not trigger the outsider. Heading there now. Moving. And our idea here currently is just step onto tiles where on other units of yours were stepped before. That way you can make sure that you're neither going to trigger a pot or the outsider. That's again still the outsider. Position confirmed. A 
I'm now going to dash up because I know that there is no pot here and this is like super limited vision range so I'm, I'm not afraid about triggering something but this here, this path uh, to, to move up that will be a little bit more tricky I suppose so we might end up with triggering the outsider right now no, we have been lucky that's good, I suppose Commander. I'm rolling. So normally, like in 99.9% .9 of the cases, you want to do um, you want to do all of the alien uh, uh, pots outside first, like get the uh, get all of the uh, patrols first before going for uh, for the outsider. Sometimes they patrol through the UFO, as you can just see, but as long as you're not engaging them actively inside there, you're not going to uh, to trigger the outsider. But of course, for whatever random reason, the game currently contradicts completely what I was uh, what I was earlier mentioning. So yes, that just literally triggered all of them. Okay, that's a little bit of change of plans, I suppose. <laughs> sometimes this game is... Uh, guys, the, sometimes this game is um, special. And by special I mean like special as of running in the Special Olympics. Um, so this here is in the, in the circle of hitting two grenades at once. So I'm going to go out of line of sight with my rookie. Could get him two kills now, which I'm probably willing willing to go for. Um, she has a little bit of an issue with her movement. Don't like that very much. The rookie has an awesome movement, to be quite quite frank. Let's first of all check the the throwing distance and if I'm fine with it. Okay, so. One could definitely throw further than that, which means her positioning here wouldn't necessarily hurt because her grenade still would hit the target. Now what we are going to do is we are 150% not going to take any risks on this. That's already two times damage. We are still going on by throwing just another grenade, giving the rookie two kills, that's fine. So he'll get his promotion. There you go, mate. Hope you're happy now. And I think we can take an aggressive stance here. Like I said, I don't want to blow up the computer as of now. But that doesn't mean I don't want to blow up uh, sectors, you can count on it. That's a solid flank. Good. So, this leaves only one of the sectors alive, and we do have an overwatch. We are in full cover and respectively out of line of sight. Um, I guess one could argue that this worked out in our advance. Yes, hmm. So the last sector it wants to play the chicken game. I'm on it, I'm on the move. Out of my experience I can almost guarantee you aye, aye. that he's going to come back next round. Almost guarantee. He's probably anywhere here and now trying to ambush us. I want to get all of my guys on the same uh, level, so these here are on one level, so they trigger their overwatch on parallel. He would be exposed, so I'm using him as bait again. Because if he's hunkered down, there's no chance of the sectoid even hitting him. Now the sectoid has moved up. Fuck you, sectoid, I want to have this melt.
and I don't want to take a 50-50. He's on Overwatch, so I can't just approach him with the uh, with the others. I could take the easy solution to just rocket him down, but that would cost me dearly, because as it stands, these uh, flight computers seem to be pretty undamaged, um, and I need the money for the satellites. So, I guess... Let's try to be as reasonable as possible. Again, fuck you, Sector, for for not approaching us. So um, he could theoretically, in the next turn, go there. I'm still going to hunker down. And I hope that the Sector is going to approach the other guys. Ah, oh, shit! Should have uh, changed for her. Sniper rifle. There we go. He's in the open. First shot. Okay, so changing on the sniper rifle wouldn't have made any difference. Come on, kill him. Good job, mate. Now, one more hit. Go, go. Alright. We are going to feed the sniper. Up another one. And we got two out of two canisters. <sighs> that was a successful mission, I like it. Not a single casualty among the entire squad. That takes so we do have another run and gun assault with decent willpower, and he even got a hit point um, improvement. Oh, he got a second hit point improvement and has even better aim. So that's going to be one tough hell of a motherfucker. I like him. This corporal is really, really doing some some decent business for us. Good. So with all of this, we do have the two intact flight computers that I was mentioning and a lot of money. Plus 24 dead sectoids, which is even more money. 365 is decent. At, in this moment in time, the chance of um, getting something else is rather slim. So what we are going to do is we are going to buy up the satellites. Yes, please. One, two, three, and four. I'm always trying to min-max my game just a little bit more. Usually I took them in the bundle, that's of course wrong, so this gives you more flexibility in cancelling them in case it, uh, it's, it's needed later. Uh, so that's just squeezing out a little bit more optionality for you to, uh, to have the option to react a, a, a bit better. Good. Here we go. Melt is researched. Is Next one, of course, uh, alien materials. And now we could theoretically get a council mission. Hasn't happened. Okay, so no co no council missions for us, but the satellite is still very much on the way. Which is fine. There's a still a second chance for council mission around day 11 to 5. Um, and it would be advisable to get one. Um, so the workshop is prepared, which uh, it was good that we held on our uh, onto our credits because now we need all of them. I'm going to sell whatever Ilarium I can find, and we're still a little bit short. So taking the 22 credits to this morning, now go for a satellite up. That's a little bit like getting the absolute necessary things done in the months. And uh, from now on, we can improve by getting optional stuff done. E.g. excavate, build a power plant here, or here, which is also fine. So build a power plant here. Um, and depending on uh, how things go, I usually usually like to get my um, either 
officer training school or in this case I think I'm going to rush for MEX, so the cybergenetic plant here, um, plus the excess lift for the next uh, for the next level. That's probably what we're going to do with the rest of this month uh, of this month in case we are getting a little bit more money.